China has hit back at the UK government following Britain's accusation that it mishandled the case of a British man executed on Tuesday for smuggling drugs into the country. The British government, along with the EU and the UN, condemned the execution of Akmal Sheikh, who they say had a history of mental illness. But China's foreign ministry spokeswoman Jiang Yu said Chinese judicial authorities had handled the case in accordance with Chinese law. She accused Britain of wrongdoing and of interfering in China's internal affairs and warned that Britain's outspoken reaction to the case could damage bilateral ties. British Prime Minister Gordon Brown said earlier on Tuesday he was appalled and disappointed by Sheikh's execution and by China's refusal to grant clemency to the father of three. Nearly $35 billion went missing from public funds in China in the first 11 months of 2009. That's according to state-run media, which says most of the money went missing through embezzlement, waste and fraud. More than 230 people, including 67 government officials, have been handed over to disciplinary authorities for their roles in the missing funds following a national audit. The audit covered nearly 100,000 companies, government agencies and public institutions across China. Limited internet services have begun to return to far western China almost six months after ethnic rioting led the government to shut down web and phone links to the outside world. Residents of Xinjiang on Tuesday could access websites for the state-run Xinhua News Agency and the People's Daily, the Communist Party newspaper. The Xinjiang government says other internet text messaging and international calling services will slowly resume. The mass shutdown came after rioting in July between Xinjiang's native Uyghur minority and the majority Han Chinese. It was China's worst communal violence in decades. The Chinese government said nearly 200 people, mostly Han, were killed. The government blamed the violence on overseas groups agitating for broader rights for Uyghurs in Xinjiang, an accusation the groups have denied. Taiwan's parliament has agreed to amend a food safety law to ban certain U.S. beef imports amid widespread fears over mad cow disease on the island, a move that could strain ties with the United States. Legislators will vote on the issue early next year. Now, if the law goes through, minced beef, cow offal and beef from cattle above 30 months old will not be allowed for import into Taiwan. Washington has said the move would annul a bilateral agreement signed by Taiwan and the United States just two months ago. Taiwan first banned U.S. beef in December 2003 after the United States found its first case of mad cow disease. In late October, Taiwan said it would lift the restrictions and reopen its markets to U.S. bone-in beef, such as ribs, T-bone steak and cow offal. The public uproar over fears of mad cow disease has caused a political crisis for Taiwan leader Ma ying Zhou. A high-ranking Chinese naval officer has said there's a strong case for China to set up naval bases abroad. Ying Zhuo, a PLA rear admiral who took part in the anti-piracy mission off Somalia, said the experience showed the Navy needed the bases to provide logistical support to its fleet. He said the first escort fleet Beijing sent to Somalia had spent 124 days at sea without docking, which added challenges to the operation. Yin called on the Central Military Commission to consider building PLA naval bases in foreign countries, such as in the waters off Somalia, to support its naval operations. Military experts say the call for the bases is in line with the PLA Navy's aspirations to transform itself from a coastal defense force into what it calls a blue water Navy force. Four pedicab drivers have been killed and five more seriously injured after they lay down in front of an express train near the city of Tianjin. The desperate act was a suicide protest against a local government decision to ban unemployed workers from making a living from their pedicabs. Hundreds of angry tricycle drivers from Jinghai County blockaded a government building on Monday in response to the ban. Witnesses said the nine lay down on the Beijing to Shanghai railway line after officials had ignored their petition. Most drivers are struggling laid off workers who don't get any financial aid from the government. Official figures show that more than 10 million migrant workers lost their jobs across the nation during the global economic downturn. A Beijing judge has told the Chinese novelist Mian Mian, who's suing Google over its plan to create an online library to hold settlement talks. After a two-hour hearing, the court ordered both sides to talk. The author is seeking damages of nearly $9,000 and a public apology. The lawsuit was filed in October after Google scanned one of Mian Mian's books, Acid House, into its library. 
Google said it had removed the book as soon as it learned of the lawsuit. Mian Mian writes risque novels, including titles such as Panda, Sex and Candy, about China's underworld of sex, drugs and nightlife. Most of her work is banned in China. Now, she's not alone in complaining about the copyright issues raised by Google's online library. The China Written Works Copyright Society is also looking for compensation for other Chinese authors whose work is included in the project. And that's the BON headlines for now, but we'll be back with more news after this.